Yo, 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 it's out peaceful, powerful flow warriors. Welcome to episode two, Reframing ROI. I'm joined once again by my brother, Zulu Flow Zion. We're gonna get into it, fam. This one's about ripple of impact. So ROI, we're going into ripple of impact now, not return on investment but the impact you're having in the world and how we can use flow states, use our best creative, compassionate, intentional abilities, our superpowers to create that in the world and to create that powerful flow. So that's what's going on. We're gonna, there we go. Bring Zulu on camera. Yes, let's flow fam. You guys are tuning in, toss them in the comments. Oh, there he is. Yo. Let's flow fam. Let's flow baby, come on, come on now. Yeah, I was saying, if y'all in the comments, let us know where you're flowing from. So drop where you're physically at in the world and then share this video out if you're feeling it because we're about to get into level two of the conversation we started last week. If you guys got a chance to join episode one, you know, flow states, return on investment and how we invest not only our money, but our energy, our attention, our heart resources. This, This is it. This is important stuff. This is important stuff. So... Zulu, it looks like you're frozen, brother. Can you hear me? Come on now. Technology's in a flow state. Facebook Live Impact. Come on. Come on now. Well, Zulu, you're frozen. Oh, there you go. You're back. I'm upside down. He's back. Get up? <laughs> so, yeah. Talking about the chakras, you know, we, we moved through the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus last week, right? Like we moved into those lower bases, and now we're going to move up into the heart, into the throat. That's where we're going next. And that's what this impact is about, right? Flowing that heart energy and then using our voice, the throat, to express that out there. Azula, you're going topsy-turvy on me. <laughs> now you're upside down from my side so yeah basically like we want to talk about flow states and for everyone that doesn't know you know you all know the little spiral emoji that's like my favorite emoji let's put that in the comments you're back you're back i'm black <laughs> i was just quickly kind of defining flow state and you know why this is so key to all the stuff we're talking about whether it's return on investment or ripple of impact you know, this ability to be in that flow, like we said, the Wu Wei is so key. It's so important, so powerful. And I found in my own life that when I'm in this, this zone of genius, of ease, of creativity, that's the place where all the magic happens. That's the place where I have the most influence, the most abundance. He's back once again. We got it. For the technical issues, got it, got it. We got it. We got it. Let's bring some breath into the equation and let Facebook calm down. Yeah. Let's take some deep breaths. Y'all Y'all can do this with us either now or later. Let's just take three big breaths into the feet, belly. And on that last exhale, tuning into the heart, tuning into the body, calling in frequencies of thankfulness, of gratitude, of peace, and of impact. Let's flow, fam. Bam. 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 All right. Yeah, thank you guys for watching with us, tuning in. You know, this is, this is fun, Zulu, because we're, we're building a narrative here, right? the narrative of flow states, the narrative of affecting the world in a positive way. And I know there's a lot of people that may be watching this that are creators or your influencers, your entrepreneurs, your business men and women. This is important stuff to understand or as an artist too. Shout out to the artists. This is like creatives. creatives. Yeah. This is some core gold and some core stuff. So Maybe let's just start out with the, the baseline ROI, right? Which we've covered last week. But Zulu, you want to jump into how this relates to money and energetics? 100%, man. So I guess the new, we're, we're all 
wealth, health, sexuality, wealth, health, and, and sex are like the three big areas. People spend a lot of money in these in these fields, right? On the on the health and beauty, on, the, on even just like the sick care, as we call it, not the health care, you know. And um, <clears throat> and you know, making money does make life easier, right? And the the old paradigm is make as much money as you can, be ruthless, you know, really create as many jobs as you can, and don't really take into account the earth or, you know, the environment or one another, you know, we, we try to pay our, our staff as little as possible, you know, get, get as mass produced as possible, all of these things. This, that's an old paradigm. And, and the new paradigm is we are freestyling, Serena. Rose. This is freestyle. Off this is freestyle. Here. This is how we go. None it's of this freestyle. is prepared. So, so uh, the new paradigm is that instead of, you know, the millionaire being I have a million dollars or the billionaire being I have a billion dollars. It's about the, the millionaire being somebody who has impacted beneficially a million people's lives or a billion mm. people's lives to be that billionaire. And that is the new paradigm we want to bring in. And that's what it's not even like we want to bring it in. That's just how it is happening. That's how it you know, is. It's more people, people centric. It's, it's environment centric. And it's less about, and it's heart based. It's love based. It's based in love. We do what we do because it's why we came here to do it. It's purpose and, and heart based. So this is what we're mm. talking about, that ripple of impact and that return on investment of our time, energy and money. You know, what, what we're going to be investing all of those three things so that we can create a big, big impact in the world and create a, I, I say beneficially impactful. So it's not necessarily, it doesn't positive, it's a positive impact. Yeah, for sure. But it's like bringing benefit to the world and others because value, we can't decide what is valuable to other people. That when it comes to value, only other people can decide if whatever we're delivering is valuable. So yes. that's why it's other, it's other centric. It's, it's heart centric. It is, it is, uh, it's not necessarily truly altruistic, but it's as altruistic as you can get. Totally. And what, what's coming up for me when you say that is like the new millionaire, can you positively benefit a million people? And this, this is the way of nature. You look at a grandfather tree, a massive grandmother tree, that's huge canopy, huge roots. Guess what? They're getting all the sunlight and energy they need. They're getting an abundant source of that because they're impacting the whole environment providing shade, providing fruit, connecting and composting with all the microorganisms, all the animal plant kingdoms. And like, whoa, that's, that's like a model for wealth right there. That's a 100%. truly rich plant. It's abundant. That is abundance right there. You look at the, the Garden of Eden, or these, we call this heaven and hell. Like that's, we can create that on earth, you know, and, and by filling ourselves up, and it is, it's like we fill ourselves up selfishly so that we can be selfless and give because it's not about how much money you can, you can make and make for yourself. It's, it's how much money that you can give away that truly makes you wealthy, right? So this is like, even you look at all the richest in the world, like they give away 95% of their wealth because it's like, what are they? it's like, it's not about them, right? Right, right. That's it. It's about impact. It's about impact. So like grounding in to impact and how this can you know, deal with your legacy and your integrity as a creator, as a man and a woman. That's something I want to speak to is like, if you're clear on like what you want to do in the world and who you want to impact and how you want to bring that about, and you're clear in an integrity, all the money in the world is available to you. You just said it, the top people, the top business moguls with billions of dollars, they give it all away because they don't, they only need, you know, a couple million to live like the best life possible of like an emperor or empress. The rest is rechanneled into the best life possible for the whole. This is about the whole, right? This is what impact means. The people you would say are really impactful. It was funny. I was reading Bruce Lee earlier today. Bruce Lee left an impact, an imprint on the whole world, period. Like all, an impact that will be remembered forever, not just for, for Kung Fu, but for a philosophy and his mind and his, his warrior spirit that was serving life and serving the heart. So this is something to think about is like, what do you want your impact to be? Because before you can make that impact and have it be really beneficial, like we're talking about and create that ripple effect, it's worth getting clear and getting an integrity, right? What are you inspired by? What do you want to do? What do you want to step into? And this is where the flow state comes in. When you pay attention to your flow state, 
you will be in a space to maximally leverage your impact. Let me say that a different way. You will have the most influence and the most magnetism to you, whether it's money, whether it's sex, whether it's health and wealth, when you are in your flow state in a positive direction towards benefiting the most people. <laughs> That's the sutra. That's the sutra. Yes. And, and the reason being is there's no resistance when you're in that flow state. So when we're resisting things, when we're resisting what is, when we're resisting what wants to come through, when we're resisting things like the things that we're scared of or fearful of, or we're listening to the self-doubt, we're caught up in the future or caught up in the past, then that, is, that creates this resistance and it creates a dissonance. So if you look at something that's dissonant, it, it doesn't flow, it doesn't sound good, music that's dissonant. So if we're talking about flow and we want to be in a flow, if we want to be in a resonant state, we need to be in the present moment, fully here, fully now, and that clarity that you talk about, being really clear on what it is you'd like to create in the world, that will help us align with our natural resonance so that we're resonant and there's less resistance and there's less dissonance, which causes, it literally causes other, anything that you'd like to call in, it pushes it away. So right. when, we're, when we're open, when we're present, when we're here, when we're now and when we're clear, that's when we allow with the flow, things can actually oh, start resonating and start vibrating, start harmonizing with us and start flowing together. And that's what attracts you. That's what makes you magnet magnetic. That's, you know, think about it yourself. Anybody, you know, that has been in flow in state in the now, and this, I believe it's comes from self love. It comes from a, a really willingness to love yourself and know thyself and to be thyself. So that for me is like the core of it. And that creates a flow. And if you think about anyone who's in that state, anyone who truly loves themselves, you can't help but love them. No matter what they look like, no matter what anything, they're not my type, whatever, you're just magnetically drawn to them, right? Right. You're impacted by them because they, they're in that state and they're living it, they're being it. <clears throat> this is not something you can like try to figure out, right? It's be here now and offer your gifts in the way that impacts the most people. That's kind of like the formula here that's forming and well, I wanna, what, do I wanna... say, what, what, what do you say to people who, who are like, I don't quite know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm here for. Like, I'm not right. quite clear on that. Right, right. It's a great question. It's a great question. There's kind of two schools of thought. I've been to the school of hard knocks in both to some level, right? One is follow your bliss. So it's like what you enjoy and love doing the most will encourage you to keep doing it. Therefore, you can become a master at it. You know, I know you Zulu talk about putting in 10,000 hours, like, like, wow, thousand reps, thousand days straight of Qigong. Like, this is, this is the level, if it's your bliss, you can become a master at it. So that's one way. That might be your purpose. The other way, if you're less inclined towards blissful states, try something and go all in. Use your best guess and go all in on it. And you'll find out pretty quickly if you go all in, whether it's for you or not. And then you get data. That's like kind of like the scientific method. And there's a, there's a sweet spot in the both that we call Wu Wei which is mm -hmm. you're in a perfect alignment with what this is what we're talking about too with ikigai you're most excited to do it it's what you're best at you're skilled at it the world needs it and it's lucrative or it, it produces abundant energy for you and your loved ones if you can find that center, that center point even for a moment you can have massive ripple of impact massive investment returning back to you from that state. And I want to talk a little bit to like the neuroscience because I'm just like a geek here. Like, think about this. You're at a Tony e Robbins. E e geek guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Wordplay. Come on now. And by the way, people tuning in right now, like if you guys are vibing, you know, the wave emoji, the little wave emoji, like drop that in the comments if you're in a flow state right now. Because I, I know exactly I am. That's how you spell it, Laurel. Laurel, that's how you spell it. That is how you spell it. Yeah. It's perfect. Um, so like, think about a time when you were so fully in a flow state and enraptured by a performance, by a speaker, by a film and a, and a character on the camera, on the screen, what were they doing that enraptured you so much and how were they impacting you? Think about it like this. This is some fun stuff from NLP. This is just like kind of the game of influence as it manifests in the human nervous system. Like, 
you subconsciously are aligning to them and getting a ton of energy. You're, you're engaged. You have a lot of attention, right? Because we know where attention goes, energy flows. So what is it about them that made them so captivating? It's an interesting question. Just like field this to the, the people on here. Like, well, what is it about them? What do you think is the quality that a human being has that makes them have the most impact? And it's not intelligence. It's not how physically strong they are. Right? To my mind, what it is, is they're synced up with this vibration and they're manifesting it fully. They're stoked about what they're doing. They have enthusiasm. They're good at it. So they put in practice. Being good at something, you know, some people are naturally good at things, but like you talk about Zulu, you got to put in the work, you got to put in the reps. So you can, you can put it into your system, into your brain computer and get you online so it becomes unconscious competence, right? You're competent at it and you don't have to think about it. That's a big piece of this. Another piece is they're making you feel something. And this is the one I really want to talk about is like emotional energy. When you're feeling something, and exactly, Laurel, you can transmute that feeling into unlimited energy, creatively, financially, influentially. And this is where that ROI ripple of impact comes into play, man. What's coming up for you, Zula? Well, that's the impact, isn't it? When, when you say impact, it's like, I'm, I'm, it's creating a ripple. Like if you look at a calm like lake, as soon as something impacts it, it causes a ripple. So you feel it. As soon as the lake feels whatever drop in it, even if it could be a little leaf that is so light and drops on there, it creates this little ripple, right? As soon as it touches it, touches it, feels it. So as soon as it hits it, it creates mm. a ripple, but it's actually being touched. So you're touching one another and to touch one another, you have to be touched and you feel alive. So this aliveness even comes back to the simple thing, like you said, of breath. When you're breathing consciously, you feel the breath fill you up. You feel alive. You're feeling that energy in motion, that emotion, you feel it. As soon as you're feeling it and you're full, and we have that at, at, our, at our disposal, like we have infinite energy here, infinite chi, that is, that is here that we can breathe in. Full of life, alive, every cell buzzing, my head is buzzing, I'm buzzing. Every morning I wake up, I'm taking 10 conscious breaths. I'm standing doing qigong, taking 60 plus, 60 to 120 conscious breathing. Of course, I'm going to be filled up with energy. Of course, I'm going to feel, you know, so I'm, I'm impacting myself with what is that access to me at all times. And, and, and it's when you forget that. It's when you forget you start shallow breathing, you start worrying about future, start work, like you get in the mind energy, then it's like, how can you make impact when you're not filling yourself up with aliveness, right? Right. So you're, you're too, too distracted. So creating an impact on yourself first with what is at, what is at your disposal here in the, in the physical realm and also the, the non-physical realm. I believe even thoughts are physical. So it's like, it's a bit dubious, like what is physical? So, you know, it's like the invisible realm, maybe that that would be better. So when you're, when you're able to impact yourself just by just, with the self sustainably so like with whatever with whatever is at your disposal then of course you're going to be feeling it if you're feeling it if you're feeling yourself if you're feeling life if you're feeling the aliveness just by being you just by being you're going to be creating an impact so this is why i feel it's important to come back to yourself and filling your own cup up because if your cup is overflowing with all the things so love with self-love with uh, with abundance with with joy with uh, with gratitude, with all of these these beneficial enthusiasm, excitement, you know, yeah. so you're get, with bliss, all of these states, you're going to be overflowing this. If you're filling yourself up, you're going to be overflowing. You can't help but overflow because we're, we're this physical vessel, but we've got the energetic body and it just grows and grows and grows and grows the more you yes. fill yourself up. And this is why I, I believe personally, it's it's really okay to be selfish about your flow, to be selfish about filling yourself up because it, at the end of the day, it does create this, you know, it's, it does create an altruistic, even though it's narcissistic to do it for yourself, it's, it does create uh, an altruistic flow in the world when you're overflowing and that impact of yourself then impacts other people who, they, they can't help but be impacted. You're walking around with, you know, you, you, look at, you look at communities where you say a thousand people start meditating, crime rates drop, you know, all the, right. violence, you know, it, it can't help, it's physics. It's the, it's the science yes. behind it, you know? Yes, the Maharishi effect. So exactly. powerful, so powerful. Like, and I love something you said, like, if, you, if, you, if you're watching this and you're wondering, why am I not creating impact? 
Why am I not having impact? Like I'm doing all these things. Why am I not having impact? Well, you nailed it. Are you being selfful? Scrap mm. selfish. That's old paradigm word. Selfful. Are you giving yourself the things, the people, the practices, the breaths that you need to overflow your cup? And I, you can feel like I was talking today with someone like you can feel when there's overflow because it comes from that exuberance and that excitement. You're like, Ooh, yeah, this feels good. If it's someone pouring out their cup for you and they're trying to have an impact, it's like, uh, I don't know if I even want that. Like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what is that? Right. Totally right. Get your cup away from me. <laughs> yeah. You can feel it. You can feel it, you know, to some degree, lesser or greater, you know, you can feel these shifts and yeah. Like, you said thoughts are things. Thoughts have matter and substance. I also believe that thought forms is the word for those of you esoterically inclined that want to get down. But, you know, thoughts and emotion. This is, the, this is this yin and yang pole of creativity manifestation, right? And so if we're talking about impact and I want to have a ripple, I want to have a ripple effect. So I want to do something that spreads and, and, and light gathers light, right? then the thoughts and emotions have to come into alignment. And this is a big piece, right? Those people on stage that you were captivated by, whether it's a musician or a speaker, the leaders that you're most captivated by, they will have this alignment and they will create it in your field by witnessing them or by interacting with them or working or playing with them because they're calling up this emotional field of like, oh man, this feels good, positive emotion. My cheese going up. And there's the mental like precision and power of, oh, I'm, I'm crystal clear on what my purpose is or what it is right now. I'm crystal clear on my offerings to the world. I'm crystal clear on who I want to serve. Boom. Now we got a vortex because that emotional energy is going to fuel this. And those thought seeds can grow in that soil. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You with me? This is, this is that alchemy. This is that alchemy. And, and it's also... The, the, the only limit, I think it's Tony Robbins who said, the only limit to your impact is your imagination and your commitment. So it's totally, it's totally up to you. You know, the, the, there is no roof. There is this concept of there is no roof in, in martial arts. So that you, no matter how deep you go, it's, there's infinite, you know? So <laughs> it's, to, it's totally up to you. Whatever, whatever impact you're making now is, is limitless, essentially. And, and that's only a belief as well. So... We, we don't want to underestimate the valuable and important difference that we make in people's lives just by being ourselves. And the more ourselves we are and the more in the moment we are, it, you know, you are making a difference in people's lives. If you're walking down the road and you're smiling to yourself, not talking to anybody, you're making an impact in the world. If, you're, if you don't talk to anybody at all in the world and you're just focusing on doing your art form, focusing on what it is you want to build your 10,000 hours up and you're away from the world, not, you might feel like, oh, I'm not having an impact. You doing that, everyone is connected. So you, you actually committing to your own flow, to your own growth, to filling your own cup is having an impact. Never underestimate that. Mm. Wow, that's so true. That's so true. Like, Wow, Zulu, I think you froze there for a second. Um, I'm still here. Are oh, you still there? You just like went, <laughs> you dropped in. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a beautiful point, man. That's a beautiful point because being an impactful being doesn't mean you're on stage or making a million dollars. There are silent saints in this world that just their presence is lifting people up and healing. And, you know, I, I've met some of these people, or I believe I've met them, where I've been in their presence. They didn't say a word to me, and I was changed by them. I can remember a couple of really intense characters in Southeast Asia that just their life. And, and what's funny is, like, you know, I look at them, I'm like, well, how are they so powerful? Like, there's this magnetic field of love around them, and they're not even speaking. Well, I, I'm not, what I'm not seeing are the thousands upon thousands of hours yeah. that they put in in solitude to offer that impact that's very subtle but also like penetrating like you can't not feel it if you tune in i, I don't want to confuse people as well because like we, we talked about thoughts being real things right so you know the when these these people who are like not doing anything out in the world and not impacting people with like in a direct obvious way they're taking action. They're taking action like a motherfucker. They're, they're thinking about 
this whatever it is that is most important, they're most valuable to them. They know why they're here, what, what they're doing. They might not necessarily be to to be out there making millions of dollars or impacting millions of lives like outwardly, but they know exactly what it is that they're focused on each and every day. And their thinking thoughts, their focus is so honed in on whatever it is that they're up to that that is causing the ripple. That is the thing mm. that is causing the ripple effect is that because we're all connected, you know, it's like there's this concept. I think it was uh, Simon Sinek. He said, genius is the idea. Impact is the action. Mm. You know, So it was, it's, it's the idea of the action, but an action doesn't necessarily have to be out there being crazy, like going, making a hundred sales calls or whatever it might be. It might just be the action of you totally thinking thoughts. Thinking thoughts is an action, you know? And it is like, we can be totally visualizing what it is we'd like to create in the world. And this is like, we look at the Buddha or we look at people who are, you know, sitting in a cave doing their meditation for all the time, like these monks, they're making an impact in the world. They might not look like it, you know, the action they're taking is turning up each and every day and committing to the moment, you know? Yes. So fi finding whatever it is that you love, finding whatever is important to you, that is the most important thing. If you don't know or understand or believe that you know why you came here on earth, what your purpose is, what your vision is, what your message is, what, what it is that you love, that is your mission. That is your purpose to, to every day to align with that more and more. You do, you do actually have a mission. I don't know what my purpose is. Well, perfect. You actually do because... You know, you knowing that you don't have a purpose now, now gives you your purpose, right? Bingo. Yeah. If you can, if you can imagine the opposite, you can get to the other side. That's the power of imagination, the law of mentalism. It's important stuff. There's like a whole nother video series we could do on like thought forms and manifestation because you're blowing my mind right now. The monk who's in the, in the Himalayas in a cave in isolation, just, just, you know, a spiritual warrior, his thought field is affecting the whole planet. And even if he only met one person, say he walked out of that cave and he came across someone by the river, that person's life will forever be changed. And he might tell a thousand people about that monk, you know, like there, there's, there's so many ways that we're interconnected that this is a good point to think about ripple of impact and the ground descent in episode two is like what impact you can have. There's no limit. There's no limit. And there's many levels. There's subtle layers. There's really overt layers. You can go and feed a thousand children in an African village and like, yo, that's like amazing impact. Or you could be in a great work. You know, the way I, I like to think about creators and great works of art, whether that's a film, whether that's a book, whether that's, you know, a blog post. It could be something very humble, but it's a great work because in your isolation, those thousands of hours, you have created something that will impact future generations. And that's like, that's kind of where I want to take this, right? Is like the legacy, legacy. And a, a good mantra that I love, I'm not sure who first coined this, but real alchemy is making your mess your message. And that's all about impact, right? Like I'm going to take this mess, right? My vulnerability, the pains I've been through, the tribulations, whatever. And I'm going to transmute that into a message that can be received by the world. And then... I'm impacting the world positively from a quote unquote negative event or negative emotion I experienced. That's some next level shit right there. It's like you're flipping whatever the Tao gave you and it was a lesson. It wasn't like you're being punished, you know, it's an important thing to remember. And then you flip that into, oh man, I'm, I'm inspired. I have action. Boom. Now there's impact in the world. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's life impacting you. And oftentimes I'd have to agree hundred percent because you look at anyone who's uh, speaking on stage, anybody who's sharing their story, anybody you see in the newspaper, anybody you see who's like has an inspirational story. It's, it's never really the person who had the, the everything go easy in their life. You know, so it's, it's often person that people who have been through the biggest trials, tribulations, struggles, you look any name that you can remember, it's Muhammad Ali, Nelson Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, all of these people who are out there, you know, their name, because they've been through some hardship, they've been through some tough times, they, they came, they made themselves from nothing. They, they were the ones who had the, the biggest struggle and that they could easily have just been like, oh, my life's fucked up, you know, I'm screwed and, and I'm, I'm worth nothing, I'm worth this, but no, you know, that they, they used that mess and turned it into the message uh, to create the impact, right? So there's a, so many, there's so, so many examples of exactly what you're talking about right now. And this is what I implore people to, to look at, look at your own life and look at, you know, even if, 
even if you had like everything rosy and peachy, you know, there's still, there's still parts of that aren't perfect and it's okay to be that. And it's okay to share that. And the more that we accept and own and be cool with being ourselves. And this is something that uh, Brene Brown talks about is courage being the, you know, it is, it is the willingness to just be ourselves and to put ourselves out there and to, to, to hundred percent be ourselves, no matter who we're interacting with and who we're, who we're talking to, who we're sharing with, the more that we are able to do that, the more people feel us and see us and are able to be like, wow, that's, I, I can, I can sense the connection. I, I, I can relate to that. And that's where the power comes from. It's like, it's not weak to be vulnerable. It is actually powerful. So it's flipping yes. it on its head, like you said. Yes. That's, that's huge. That's huge. And so service is the key. There's, a, there's an aspect of impact that if you are a servant to humanity and a servant to life beyond yourself because you're overflowing, you know, we're on a, going on a journey here. So we're assuming you've done all these practices, you're tapping into your chi, you're tapping into breath, you have a practice, you're alive in the world, whether you're in tribe or not, or you do both. Once that's all online, then it's like, do you have a service mindset, service to others? The people you just named... Ali, Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, these people were servants on a very high level because they were doing self-sacrifice through their mess, through whatever shit came their way. They still showed up and had massive, massive impact. And this is so potent to understand that, you know, you don't get impact by making it all about you. <laughs> at, at, the, at, at the same time, let me just interrupt there real quick. Uh, it was Mandela who said that you cannot impact society unless you have changed yourself. So this right. is it. it, it it's a paradox. From... It's a paradox. Right. You have to go all in on yourself, but then the fruits of that are to be shared with all, right? There's, there's, and there's like, and it's the inspiration of it. Is it's not about I want to be a better me just for me. It's like you know, like I want, I want the money, I want the success, I want the whatever it is that's going to make me feel better. It's like I that fulfillment filling yourself up making yourself whole and for me it comes back to presence and self-love you know like all of those two things that encapsulates you know that self-knowledge knowing self loving self being self that authenticity that that self-fullness comes back to that it will then you know if you're motivated purely for yourself it's not going to be very impactful because if you think about it you're only having impact in one person's life right 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> so if, if the motivation and the inspiration comes from like wow i actually this is juicy this fills me up this is beneficial this is it's the same thing for me if i if i do something it started when i did the the 100 day qigong challenge i did that for me and a friend it was two of us only and then as soon as i did it i was like i got so much benefit from it i was like i need to share this with the world this is selfish very selfish, very golem selfish, you know, like I'm going to keep <laughs> magic to myself. Right, right. If I did it and it just tasted so much better. How good does food taste when you share it with others, right? Right, it's right. It's like for me, this adds this extra like, oh, this is extra tasty because I'm sharing it with good people. There's smiles on faces, you know. So that in that as well, it's like it's not about impressing anyone. Someone asked earlier, what about social media and causing impact on social media? It's like, well, don't use social media to impress people and impress upon them. That's that feeling your cup on them, trying to impress upon them. You know, no, that's not how it works. If you're using it to impact and create an impact in the world by being yourself, being vulnerable, sharing, making your mess your message, being really real, being a little bit separate from the crowd as well. You know, it's okay to be different. It's okay to separate right. yourself and, and groove and set your own groove and get in your own lane. That's totally cool because people will be inspired and, and feel that and they'll have an impact because the amount of times that I'll share something that I'm like, it's just like, oh, this is a real story or something. This is something that happened to me and it might feel a little bit weird or why am I sharing this? Because it's like, how can this help anyone? This is just me almost feeling like, yeah, I'm just sharing myself. I'm just going to just let whatever wants to come through, come out, right? And then people like, we have dozens of messages or hundreds of messages comes with man that was so impa impacting oh man i was in tears or i was so inspired to do xyz it's like wow that is like i i have pos I, even me who like who knows about this stuff didn't think would have that much impact but really it does the more that we can be ourselves and for me that like is i i guess it it helps because i have this longer term 
kind of thinking, right? And when we think long term, and when I talk long term, I'm thinking about 500 years, 1,000 years. You know, I'm thinking about why my soul came here and like we, we can live forever if we focus on that legacy. You know, if we're yes. just focusing on the minuscule, what am I going to do this lifetime? What am I going to do this year? What am I going to do this decade? Yeah, we can, we can do some stuff. That's cool. If we're thinking about what am I going to do today, this week, paycheck to paycheck, all of that thing. Yeah, what kind of impact? What can, and I, I can live forever if I'm thinking in thousand year blocks. What is what is going to happen if I focus on that long term? You know, that, then I start thinking big. And this is a, this. I, I believe a lot of us are thinking really small and really short term. And when I say short term, it might even be one or two generations. We're thinking about our kids only. What about our right, twenty right. generations down in the future? You know, that for me is a, a way to really expand our thinking and and i call upon people to have to think about that because i believe environmental issues would disappear i believe inequality would disappear i believe all the craziness that we're that we're doing and not doing in terms of education would disappear if we started thinking in that bigger thinking yeah brother this is something the indigenous people of all over the world understood whether it's the aborigines in australia or the tribes in the amazon seven generations mm. That's how you walk on the earth. That's how you speak to your neighbor. That's how you treat other humans and all beings, even the rocks and the wind. Seven generations deep. I mean, this is like, you want to talk about next level ripple of impact? If everything you said, thought, and did in the world was on that mind state, what would you look like? Let's just, let's tune into that right now. Like, what would a human being look like? What would I look like? You can turn it on yourself. I mean, a thousand years forward. That's like great, 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 great times 10 grandchildren walking on the earth in the ripple of the impacts I had now, the impacts we have now, our legacy. And this, this is what brings me to like, you know, what, what, is the, what is life really about? What is a life really about? You know, to take it to that level, to death which may just be a door. It's just another part of life. It's a natural process. But if our legacy and we're, we're in our legacy this deeply and we're committed to operating in a flow state, operating from our passion, purpose, or both, and or both, you know, how do we do that so it's regenerative? Not just sustainable, right? Because if you look around at the world, we don't want to stay sustainable. Things aren't, some things aren't going so great. We want to be regenerating which means bringing it back online. It's like soil. Too much is grown in the soil. We've got to add back in minerals and nutrients to enrich that soil and till it and regenerate it so we can grow this new root out into those seven generations. So that, that's true ROI right there. You want true ROI? You think a thousand years ahead, man. That just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and and think about the minuscule the minutia that the the stuff that we focus on and the, the stuff that becomes problematic like what are off a duck's back you know when, when like all of these little issues we get help like so and so didn't give me enough attention my partner this or that my kids this or that my boss this or that like you know really is it really that important focus on your mission right F focus on, on why you can be everything else becomes if you want to become impervious to bullshit impervious to to like shitty states have, just grow your vision grow that you know have that focus on that legacy so true so true getting caught like if you're committed to a thousand year mission like if you want to cultivate energy in your life and create something that can be lived that long even if that is a child like you will not trip on little bullshit you will not like get caught up in little things in Babylon that might, you know, oh, you know, some people let that derail them. And like you said, I think you nailed it, Zulu. A lot of people are, th are way small with their vision. And even, even people I'm used to in the entrepreneur community and the new age community, they're like, yeah, like my five-year plan. It's like, whoa, you're still here. You're still, <laughs> it's so small. It's great to break it down too. Like, don't get me wrong. There's, there's value in, in, in it's, life sure. is a balance, right? We're always looking at the, yeah, we have a massive vision, but like, don't get so caught up in the massive vision that you don't take action today. Break it down. Right. Have a plan. How, all right, cool. That's great to have a five hundred year vision, thousand year vision. But how how are you going to make it happen? That's that's the practical right. side of me. That's the that's the coach in me going. 
all right, cool, that's great. Now, how, how's it going to happen? Like, okay, how specifically are you going to create that ripple of impact? And that's a, that's a question I'd love to throw out there. Like, I'd love to hear people's visions. I'd love to hear people's, you know, if they were to think like that, like you were, you were mentioning earlier, having that seven generation vision, if we were to think like that, not just, you said it real quickly. You said if every thought, every word, every action was from a place of, okay, how is this going to impact seven generations in the future? actually answer that question guys like what would you think what would what would be your thoughts what would you focus on what would you not do what would you not focus on what would you get rid of what would you stop tolerating you know actually would love to hear people's answers because this stuff we can sit down and listen to this facebook live this web series this, this you know this stuff that we're putting out there but what are you actually going to do with it that's that's for me the most important thing i'm 100 percent i'm all good with the guy sitting in the in the himalayas meditating non-stop it's like, cool, he knows what he's doing. It's like, for real, I'm not that excited to do that for myself. I'm like, all right, what am, what am I going to do with it now? You know, I'm great. I'm, I love meditating, love Qigong, love cultivating flow. But for me, it's like, all right, how is this going to, going to allow that purpose to be, be, be manifest here in the world? 100%, 100%. I love that. What are the actionables, right? Like, so Rostio says, what my heart's been feeling, sensing lately is the importance of remembering the joy of doing. I mean, radiance and simplicity, like being children again. That's, that's beautifully stated. Beautifully stated. I love that. Serena said something. Yeah, yeah. Serena said something beautiful. She believes life is one big ceremony for the soul. So that's some poetry. You should write that down, sister. Um, yeah, anyone else tuning in here, like, if you have a question and or if you want to share your vision from this state of having that much ROI, that much impact, that much legacy, what does it look like? And be vulnerable. Like, you know, for me, what came up, I'll quickly answer the prompt myself is, you know, the way I treat animals and the way I treat plants and the way I treat inanimate objects would completely shift. I feel like I'm already hyper mindful, but how much more mindful could I be? Like, would I want to mess up the environment at all? Or would I want to, like, live in symbiosis with it? And I, like, saw a vision of myself, like, eating, like, raw cacao pods and mangoes off the tree and still having my satellite internet so I could get these messages out, but living in, like, full union and harmony with the earth. And, like, what would that even look like? Like, for me, I think it does have something to do with physically being on the land and working and being in alignment with the land. And so that means growing and killing my own food if I'm going to eat meat, if I'm going to eat animals. So, Zulu, I think you might have froze for a second. But uh, everyone else on here, like, this is your time. Questions? What is coming up for you in this conversation about ROI, about your legacy, about impacting potentially seven generations out in the future, impacting thousands, millions, billions of lives. That's the new wealth. That's a real billionaire. That's a real millionaire. How many lives can you affect? You know, this is, this is some potent stuff. Some potent stuff. Like, if you want to be a billionaire, why? Like, what, what will your billion US dollars do for seven generations? That's the mindset here. Because I, I catch myself, you know, as an entrepreneur, like, oh, yeah, this program and this, this package and, like, man, this is exciting. What's, what, what's the price point? And, like, how can I get into abundance mindset? It's like, also, how many people am I going to affect? Put a smile on their face, change their inner and outer world because they came into contact with me, right? It's huge. Sasha. I'm experiencing my new purpose beginning to manifest by balancing the masculine and feminine in my heart, leading to instant downloads, divine feminine, and then immediately implementing divine masculine, bringing action to my beingness. Wow. That is very well said. Well, that's, well, that's a, a, a great point with immediate implementation. Yeah. You know, for, for me, it's like, like I was just mentioning about you know, yeah, we can watch this live. Yeah, we can be inspired. Yeah, we can watch an inspirational video on YouTube. Yeah, we can read an inspirational book. How many of us have read a book and we don't apply anything of, of the book? You know, we just read it and like, yeah, I know that concept. And it's like, yeah, well, <laughs> not wisdom until, we, 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 I know me 100%, wisdom is knowledge applied, right? So it's like committing to that wisdom, committing to that 
part of ourselves that came here with a mission that came here you know we it's a it's a journey of remembrance i believe life you know we're like we came here with a mission we came here with a purpose and often we just forget what it is and some of us are lucky enough to remember what it is at a really young age you know and some of us have you know we we just get on with life and do life and do what we're supposed to do do what we're told to do you know and that, and that's the awakening that we talk yeah. about yeah and you know if you're here now watching this video if you've been attracted and magnetized here you're obviously you've got some flow you've got some resonance happening that has attracted you here and and i believe that your soul is pointing you and putting you in the, the position to actually heed this uh, this remembrance this calling to to life and calling to love so this is flow states will help you get there and and if you are you want to create an impact in the world and for me that comes back to immediate implementation so i want to know what are three actions people are going to take what are the what is the biggest down for me that's the most exciting thing i don't know if you caught all that or if i'm freezing or what's going on yeah i i caught most of it the end i think there's a little bit of your, your download was too strong like facebook can't even handle it um <laughs> but what's funny is like what you're saying is so true if you are watching this video, it's for a reason. If you are magnetized here, it's for a reason. We got one more episode next week. And if you've been on this journey, if anyone's from here from episode one, give us a shout out. I would love to just know from my own curiosity. But what are the actions you're gonna take? You're watching this video, ripple of impact. Okay, fuck yeah. Flow states, okay, fuck yeah. These guys seem to be on something, okay. Like what, how can you step off this live into your life and immediately act upon the thoughts and emotional energy you're feeling right now because you can start right now it's not like oh i i, I can't just quit my job it's like yeah but you can step into more ripple of impact you can step into more breath you can step into some meditation you can step into writing down your goals starting at the top from like a thousand year view right like all the way at the top thousand years seven generations whatever it is Act is going to be right here, right now, in the world. So that's the word, fam. That's the word. Looks like we lost Zulu here for a second. Uh, I'm not sure if it's his connection, but if you guys are tuned in right now. Be sure to tag someone who needs to hear this. Share this video out. Appreciate you guys so much for all the comments, all the support. We have episode three next week. We're going to flow on ROI one more time. And that is the river of inspiration. See you there. The link will be below. Hit going in the event. Send us a message if you vibed. And as always, stay in the flow state, fam. Love you all.